Here is the wireframe of that Rube Goldberg machine with a little over a dozen steps with the task of putting eggs in a bowl. The machine was done completely using Blender's rigid body physics with no keyframes within the machine. The camera observing it is the only keyframed object. Starting with the beginning of the machine, the ball is going to drop. The ball is an active rigid body. Nothing special here in terms of that setting. And once it drops, it's going to hit a passive rigid body here, which is an extruded cube to guide it down into these first sets of dominoes. These dominoes are active rigid bodies and <clears throat> the margin of sensitivity is a little smaller than the default to allow it to appear to collide when it was supposed to without lowering this a little bit in this particular area, it appeared to collide a little before it actually hit. And uh, given the size of this, that wasn't desired. The other um, tip here is that when you have these objects set up and, and you don't want them to start moving before there's a collision that should start the moving, you wanna click on the deactivation and start the objects deactivated. Each one of these has that setting so that they don't move until the ball or, or another domino hits into them and you'll get that exact desired effect that you're looking for. <clears throat> this next part here is a cone that was chopped off the top and then extruded out and, and rotated to give it a little bit of a curve <clears throat> that will hit this rigid body ball. And this active ball will then fall into here, into the translucent material, and hit these hinge paddles. These hinge paddles are gonna knock into this ball up here and start this moving. The hinges are not hard to do. What you wanna do is you wanna get your axle in here or, or something that it's gonna rotate on, depending on what you're doing. And here, this is the little axle going through. And then my paddle, the um, axle is just a passive rigid body object. And the paddle is gonna be an active one. And the hinge is going to be part of a, an empty. In this case here, I use the plane axis. And then I set this empty to a generic type which allows for control over the angular and linear movements. I told the linear movements don't go anywhere. I need this paddle to stay put right here and, and smack into this one gently when it's ready. And then the <clears throat> angles on the X and the Y, I lock them down to zero. And then the Y axis, which is gonna rotate this way, is gonna only rotate <clears throat> 10 degrees in other direction to give that effect of tapping it and then it'll fall back a little bit, but that's not that important after this. Once it, once it does that 10 degree rotation, it's just enough to knock this ball in motion. This ball is another rigid body object <clears throat> and it will start deactivated as well to make sure it doesn't move till it's supposed to. Once it gets onto this set of ramps here, these are passive rigid bodies, nothing too special here. Um, they're just the cubes with the uh, extruded out and or scaled out rather and extruded up a little bit with some loop cuts to give it a little bit of a, a side and then over here there's a little bit of a back so when the ball comes down it'll bang into that a little bit and then come down here get caught and make its way down to the next piece of the machine which is a stack of cubes connected to a chain with a little bit of a wedge in here that's going to then move this board out of the way and let this ball fall so this here is an array of objects. You can use the array modifier to, to take one cube. And this is, this is a simple active body um, objects here started starting deactivated, waiting to be collided against and create an array, uh, two by two array of these cubes and then create links for these chains. Uh, these are toruses. You can get a, a torus right here and then you can extract it up um, I mean, sorry, extrude it up so that you can create this kind of chain effect and then loop the chains together, come up to the top over the other passive body uh, ledge into this wedge and be able to pull it when you're ready. So the ball's gonna come down here and smack into that. This will coll collapse, this will pull out of the way, this piece will fall. And then the next piece here on a translucent material, and I'm not that great with materials or lighting, so if you have any comments about how I can improve that, I'd love to hear them. This ball is gonna move. Now these balls here, you wanna make sure they also are starting deactivated so they don't start moving in advance of any collision. The, um, these balls here need to get hit by this big ball and fall into this cavity 
allowing then the big ball to go bump, 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 bump over them and fall to the next piece. So in order to get that to go right, you'll see this ball here has a friction value of 0.5, and these other ones are a little smaller. That will allow them to get out of the way in time down into here, and then allow this guy to, to hold up and fall before this guy runs over everybody. And that was just a trial and error thing based on the materials, the angle of the incline, and <clears throat> how the simulation was running over and over again. So as you see, the balls will start to go, everyone will kick in, they'll all fall, and this guy here will hold up a little bit, this little guy here, to allow these other ones to make room. And then he'll fall down. And then allow this guy to go boom, 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 boom. And come over. And, the, and this is a passive uh, rigid body object, which will allow it to collide and hold it there. The next step here is a, another hinge, just like we set up the other ones. This has a little bit less of, of an angle to move at, but it's locked down to just that angle and it's not gonna fall when something collides into it. And then there's two five pound rigid body objects on here. This one's a little narrower than this guy and you'll see why in a second. This guy here is only one kilogram. These are each five kilograms. When the ball falls, it's going to knock into this side and start the three degrees this way of the hinge and then allow this ball here with a little bit more weight on this side to then move towards this object and knock it off, which will then put five kilograms here and one kilogram here, doing the hinge the other way, three degrees, and that will then allow this last block to fall down onto this additional hinge. This hinge here is, is set up the same way with a, a even smaller amount of movement, because what happens is when this guy hits down here, it's gonna then move this arm up here over a little bit, and I just needed to go just enough to tap it like that. And that was experimenting too to get it right. Um, one tip that um, I knew about but kept forgetting was once you, if you're having objects collide and they're flying all over the place like wild, check to make sure that you're applying the scale. You'll see here the scale in this guy isn't even applied. This one should be this, so watch what happens. So you have the scale here is 1.889. What you want to do if your objects aren't behaving properly, even though they look like they're supposed to, you've created enough padding between the different objects in the system. There's nothing that should make them go wild. You want to hit control A and then apply scale. And when you do that, you'll see this goes from 1.889 to one, and that will stabilize in a lot of cases, the physics simulations as it runs across. Um, include that in the buffer space and then any friction you may need should get you better results and you'll see that these not, these things are going to knock over just as you want and these go from smaller to bigger dominoes. Coming over to here it's just going to make a run around and uh, come down into this shiny ball here and this guy right here is just going to follow down onto this ramp and come around. This ramp was done using a uh, a circular curve and a, a um, cube that was uh, stretched out and then given sides and then using that curve uh, adding a curve modifier which was um, done over here using that curve that we added you'll get this effect here and then um, you, what you want to do is add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out and uh, I also worked on the the um, margin here made it a little more sensitive to 0.01 to keep it within here and make it make it go very smoothly down this down this area here, and uh, and I gave it a little less friction as well to speed it up a little bit since it wasn't that steep. I wanted to make sure it was going fast enough. The last piece here is another passive rigid body object that's going to hold down the ball as it comes in into these last dominoes and this little paddle here that's going to then push down these the final goal which is these eggs sitting here waiting for this bowl. So these dominoes are also active rigid body objects. I used a convex hull here to see if that would work well and it did for the shape. It worked well. Um, the collision also I lowered it to make sure that nothing moves uh, prematurely and then don't forget to apply that scale. You'll see the scales are all one here 
make sure that that's the case when you are, if you do scale down an object or scale it up, make sure you apply the scale to reset these back to one so that the physics engine doesn't have any issues simulating it. And so the rest of this comes down here, knocks into these guys, and then the eggs are just spheres that you take proportional editing, which is up here, and turn that on and then take the top vertex and stretch it up a little bit and you'll get a nice quick looking egg shape, which will then kind of waddle down or, or, or not, it'll look right. And then over here, I used a, not a sphere, but I chopped in half an icosphere. That seemed to hold the, the eggs better um, as, a, as with the effect I was looking for. And that's it. So if you have any questions or comments about this, please leave, a, uh, leave them down below. I'll be happy to try to answer them. Or if you have any comments about how I should better set up the lighting here or the materials, I'd love to hear about those as well. If you found this video entertaining or interesting, please consider liking and subscribing. And thanks for watching.